I guess for me, one of the the questions I've always asked myself is why in one of the richest countries in, in the world in the 21st century do we find ourselves in a situation where people are rough sleeping? In this series, I've realised that it's become less about the effects of the pandemic on the homeless community and more about their future. So I went and spoke to Paul Dennett, who's the mayor here in Salford. He believes that a colossal part of the problem is the housing crisis. But, but what sits at the heart of this for me is the chronic undersupply of social housing and council housing. Yeah. You know, if we had enough stock and if we weren't losing stock under the right to buy, arguably we'd be able to accommodate everyone in social or council housing right. in the city of Salford. For a homeless person, what is the process for them to get housed? So they would then um, present to the local authority and then what happens is the Homelessness Reduction Act legislation and the duties within that legislation on local authorities are applied to the individual and their circumstances. And then a decision is made whether or not um, we owe them a duty to house them. So there's an assumption here that if anyone presents as homeless, we have a statutory responsibility to house them. That's not how the law works, unfortunately. What situation would they have to be in to be entitled to be housed in regards to legislation? It's families with children, okay. usually. In Salford at the moment, I think there's just over 6,500 households yeah. on our housing waiting list. We know a lot of single males, yeah. for example, present in the data. And that's because when you apply the legislation, you don't have a duty to always house those individuals. The exclusion of single men in the legislation forced me to reflect upon the men that I had met within the homeless community and just how slim their chances were of ever being rehoused. When I spoke to um, a man in the homeless community himself the other day, his worries were that he was scared, really. He was a 50-odd-year-old man and he was scared to go into hostels because there's a lot of spice and there's a lot of violence following that. How do we house people that are too scared to follow the housing process? You're absolutely right. There are issues with night shelters, with hostels, and that came out of the work we did with Harriet Watt University, which is why they were saying to fully explore um, the use of self-contained accommodation as an alternative to hostels and night shelters. And it's for all the same reasons that you've just articulated there. I guess the challenge we've got is, is where is the accommodation to move people to? Yeah. And we really need to get on, and government needs to get on, in my opinion, in supporting us with building the accommodation we need for the future. Yeah. And as the people of Greater Manchester head towards a future of freedom following the pandemic, just what truly does the future hold for rough sleepers? <laughs>